Hello all my beauties and brainies and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, um, Shell Shocker, BH Cosmetics has filed for bankruptcy. Um, I did not see that coming. I, how I understood it was that they're not fully closing their doors. They're like selling their name. So they, another like investor or company might buy them up. That is how it was explained to me. But this got me thinking about other companies that I think might file for bankruptcy during 2022. Um, this year has been really rough on pretty much every avenue of business because of COVID, with supply chain issues, with people buying less. But I think it's been especially hard for makeup companies because it has all those issues, but then also people are wearing less makeup and I think also the avenues of how people are buying makeup and like learning about different makeup um, items that are coming out has changed a lot. So I think I would, I, I think I'm going to go through some of these companies, show products that I have from some of these companies and why I think they might be struggling. I know that people have come up with these videos and they pick like a few companies, but honestly, I think that while the reasons might be a little bit different, I think that every company really honestly needs to be on their toes because the competition is so fierce, but honestly, I don't think that there's a company out there that's like, you know, 100% perfect and 100% got it all together. So with all that said, let's get into the video. So the first company I want to talk about was Hip Dot. I have their makeup sponge here. I am so sorry. It is dirty. It's so sad. Let's just flip that around so you can see the beautiful side. So I think Hip Dot could go out of business because honestly, the only time that I hear people talk about it is when they get their palettes, um, Hip Dot's palettes and like Ipsy or BoxyCharm and I think for a company to like continue to strive and make money I think people need to be buying it full price and when I do see people reviewing their products from like Ipsy or BoxyCharm like people seem to like it but it doesn't seem like people are going out of their way to purchase more of their products so I think this is definitely a brand that we could see the end of in 2022. By the way, their sponges are really, really great. I do recommend them. Another pro company that I think could honestly have a lot of struggles during 2022 is Too Faced. I know that I know this is probably going to be a controversial pick, but I think that Too Faced could have some struggles. This is um, the Too Faced Do You um, translucent setting powder in radiant pearl this is another product i really like however i do think that Too faced could have some problems during 2022 because Too faced is known for pretty packaging however i feel like over this year every company has come out with pretty packaging especially um indie brands have really been killing it with with pretty packaging so i feel like they can't really rely on this one selling point i have really pretty packaging and because the indie, the makeup brands uh the makeup community has become so competitive i think when you're relying on one thing to kind of be your big selling point i feel like it could um it could provide some uh setbacks for you in the future also i haven't really heard any like one item that's really gone viral from Too Faced in a while so I, I don't really know. Also I think that you see Too Faced products in TJ Maxx and Marshalls a lot and I think that when you see it at these discounted prices you tend to not buy it full price because you're just like well we'll see if it lands in TJ Maxx and Marshalls and I don't know if a, a makeup company can survive just selling discounted products. Um, that's why I'm kind of, I'm unsure about this one. Oh, and I haven't really heard anyone recommend, I don't know. Uh, it could survive though, because I think that it's really well known, it's really popular, and I think a lot of makeup 
gurus, people on YouTube, the makeup community are suggesting this brand so it might survive but I think that it does have some some hardships coming in the future. A, another brand I wanted to talk about was Huda Beauty. This is their matte and metal melted shadow sticks. I actually really like this one however I got another one of these and it was like almost completely dried up so take that as you will. Um, I think that Huda Beauty might be having some struggles in the future because while it is popular, um, I know that it has had a lot of controversial opinions with their mystery boxes and I just think that with the makeup community being so competitive, any predominantly negative thing can completely wreck you. Um, I think once you have a very strong negative experience with a brand, it makes you hesitant to continue to continue your journey with that brand. And so that's why I think that it might have some struggles in the future. However, it has had a really good year and it has had a lot of um, really viral products. So I think for 2022, it might, it'll probably survive. But I think in the future, I think it definitely needs to step up or it will have, um, it will have some problems. Another brand that I really think could face some struggles is a Tarte. This is the Tardis Pro Glow, Glow Liquid Highlighter. And I also have, um, I also have their Jelly Glaze Lip Mask. I really recommend these jelly lip masks. They are amazing. I think that Tarte could really face some struggles in the future because I just don't hear anyone talking about these um, products anymore. And in the world of social media and in the world where people are buying what is talked about, if it is not talked about, your brand is dying. And I just haven't heard anyone really talk about Tarte, like literally at all. I know, um, they also have a sister company, um, Sugar Sugar Crush, so or Sugar Rush or something like that. So maybe they are doing really well, but I just you know I haven't heard anyone talk about it, and I I think that that's why this brand could be dying. I think that we also saw how that affected like Becca Cosmetics. It died because no one was talking about it, and so I think these big brands that were really popular are kind of struggling in how to stay popular is kind of their big struggle i know that i know that tarte was one of the first companies to use makeup youtubers to promote their products however everyone's doing that now and i feel like they just haven't come up with that new thing that will really help them promote their products um, another company that I think could really face some struggles in 2022 is Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is their Liquid Glow um, Face Highlighter. I did actually get this at TJ Maxx. This is another company that I see a fair bit at TJ Maxx, I feel like. Um, I think that this company will face some issues because once again, I don't really hear anyone talking about it. Once again, I feel like I see it in TJ Maxx a fair amount. And I just feel like they haven't come up with another viral product in a while, once again. And I just I just feel like the makeup community has kind of lost interest in Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I think it's gonna face the same struggle as Tarte will in they were really popular companies. However, you know, there's all these new companies coming out every day. How do you get people to maintain their interest in you? How do you rekindle that interest in you? I feel like they haven't really come up with that yet. Um, another brand that I think is gonna face some struggles is Marc Jacobs. This is the Marc Jacobs um, concealer stick in medium. This was also at TJ Maxx. I think this company will face some struggles because once again, a lot of their products were in TJ Maxx and Marshalls, like quite a bit. Also, they have had some viral um, products. However, they've had some really major flops. I know that their like Espresso Shots concealer um, was really controversial and that a lot of people really, really didn't like it. And once again, once you have a really negative experience with a brand, 
you might not necessarily come back. Um, I This is not the Espresso one. This is just, uh, I think just a regular concealer stick. Honestly, I don't really, I wouldn't recommend it because it doesn't really blend very well. And it is at a higher price point. And I think in the really com in competitive makeup world, if you are selling for a higher price point, like you need to be banging. And I think that there's a lot of drugstore products that are honestly better than Marc Jacobs, especially with the whole price point difference. So I think it could really struggle. Another company that I think is really gonna struggle is Ulta Beauty. Not the whole brand, but I think their makeup side is really struggling because while I think it benefits them that they have a makeup uh, a makeup brand in their store, I've all the products that I've tried have been really crappy, like really, really, really bad. I've tried um, this is a face primer, and I find that it's just it has a very gross, nasty texture. I really don't like it. Um, I've also tried a face mask from them, and I think I. It was okay and I've tried a like highlighter, bronzer, blush, quad thing and it was terrible. It had literally no pigment and I think <laughs> Ulta Beauty, um, their cosmetics side, like their own brand has survived because you'll be in the store and you're like, well, Ulta Beauty is a really known store therefore their own cosmetics should be good however they suck they literally suck also i know that they've had a lot of uh backlash from their uh holiday like mystery boxes like their advent calendars and i think that there's definitely going to be a point where it's just they're spending more money to make these products than they're actually getting out of it. I mean, honestly, this is one of the makeup brands that I just hope goes away. I like Ulta Beauty as a store. I just don't really like their makeup. Another brand that I think is really gonna struggle during 2022 is Maybelline. This is their Great Lash Maybelline New York Very Black, Very Intense Mascara. And this is their Maybelline Sky High Lash sensational i think that maybelline is really going to struggle because historically their um historically their marketing has been you know they have some really beautiful actress like emma stone or someone like that um as kind of the face of their company however i feel like every makeup brand now is somehow connected to someone famous and i think that people are buying makeup products now not because it is connected to some celebrity but because it is connected to somebody on instagram or on youtube who is known for makeup and so therefore i feel like their marketing is a little outdated and a little archaic also, I think that people bought Maybelline because you're walking through Walmart, you know, getting your groceries and you're like, oh, I need a mascara. I need an eyeliner or whatever. And you go and, you know, it's just something that's right there. It's convenient. And then while you're there, you know, like, oh, you know, this lipstick looks nice or whatever. However, with 2022, a lot of people aren't going in stores to go grocery shopping. And I think that a lot of people are also not buying makeup in stores so i think that maybelline is really really gonna struggle i feel like no one talks about it anymore i honestly don't know what products they've come out with recently i mean it's a brand that's been around for a while but it's a brand that really hasn't added any new any new flavor to their brand any new anything new or exciting it's just kind of stagnant i feel like so i think it really could struggle during 2022 Another brand that I think really can struggle during 2022, this is the Balm. This is a single shadow in the shade um, Red Handed. It's a really beautiful shade. I really, really like this one. Let me just, it is really beautiful. However, I think that this brand will really struggle because um, its packaging is really nice. However, it can be very repetitive. Um, also, a lot of their palettes are very, very, very neutral, and I just feel like 
once again, in a very competitive marketing world, you need to stand out. And I feel like what well, all of their pack, like all of their um, palettes are very neutral. And I just, I don't hear anyone talk about it. I don't think that, that they're adding anything new or fresh. And like, I really like this single shadow. However, I think that as we're buying more online, you need to like go out of your way for a product. You know, you need to be like, I want the balm, whatever, eyeshadow palette. It's not as much wandering through a store or anything. So I, I yeah, I really think this brand is gonna struggle. It, it just kind of seems like it needs it needs something a little bit new. I like the packaging. I just feel like they're relying too much on their packaging. It feels a little, it feels like they're very similar as Too Faced and that they're both relying on their packaging as like their main selling point. However, once again, indie brands are really stepping it up on packaging and you really can't rely on that as your single marketing tool. <laughs> Another brand that I think really could struggle during 2022 is Pixie. I don't think they're gonna go out of business, but I feel like they could struggle um, because I think that during um, 2020 or like during 2019, it felt like they had all these collabs going on and they were kind of, they were going from very like neutral, natural makeup to like, here's a colorful palette, here's like a lip, and um cheek palette like it felt like they were coming out with new and fresh ideas it felt like they were like kind of expanding from what they were known for it felt like they were definitely gaining momentum however i haven't really heard anyone talk about pixie at all i do know that they've come out with skincare and their skincare is really i love their skincare however i don't really hear people talk about pixie skincare either as always elf Personally, I like Pixie skincare better than e.l.f. It's my favorite drugstore skincare, but I think that they've been focusing so much on their skincare that I think that their makeup side has kind of been lacking. I really do. I just have their eyeshadow stick and it is really nice. It's this top one um, and I would recommend it. However, I think that they could struggle on the makeup side because it just feels like they're not really that's not where their focus is really at all okay <laughs> so this might be a controversial pick but a brand i don't think it's going to struggle but i'm kind of more interested in what they're going to do during 2022 is elf this is the mad for mats um eyeshadow palette i really like it it's very soft it's very blendable and their um, no budge eyeshadow. This is, um, I think it's in mint, mint melt. And there is the shade. I don't think it's gonna struggle. However, I am kind of interested in it because they've been spending a lot of money um, doing deals with like influencers um, to promote their products so while people are talking about them a lot i am kind of interested in what the cost versus reward is for them because i know that i've seen so many like hashtag ad on instagram with elf so i am kind of interested in that though i would say that they are kind of the benchmark on what brands like Maybelline should be doing and that they need to be rethinking how they sell their products because e.l.f. was very similar I would say to the traditional Maybelline whereas e.l.f. has really um redesigned their marketing Maybelline has not so I, I don't think that e.l.f. will necessarily struggle however it would be interesting to see I'm kind of interested in how do you maintain that momentum because they have momentum but how do you maintain that and how do you maintain it without the large expense of always using influencers i don't know so i'm kind of intrigued by this brand okay i really am surprised that this brand honestly still exists this is smashbox this is um one of their lipsticks this is in the shade black cherry i really love the shade 
but the lipsticks, honestly, it's okay. I'm actually really surprised that Smashbox still exists because the only product that I've ever heard anyone talk about about Smashbox was their primers and I've tried them and honestly, they're just okay. And I've tried their lipstick and it's just kind of okay. And in a world, once again, of a very competitive marketing com uh, makeup community, you can't just have okay products. You just can't, you're gonna go out of business. So I'm honestly really surprised that this brand still exists. I never hear anybody talk about it. I don't really know any of what their products are other than their primers. And I guess this, cause this was in TJ Maxx. It was in a lipstick trio thing. So how do you, once again, how do you get people interested in your company? I think that's a question that they need to be thinking about. Okay, so this is the brand Bodyography. Honestly, what I'm gonna say about this company is similar to what I said about Hip Dot, and I would say stands true to every every makeup community. Let me restart. I think it stands true to every makeup brand that is an Ipsy and BoxyCharm. These are the Bodyography um, liners in the shade Black Walnut and Onyx. Um, honestly, they're okay. They're honestly a little hard. I think the struggle with when makeup brands are in Ipsy and BoxyCharm is yes, people will like try your products that maybe wouldn't. However, I don't hear a lot of people trying things from Ipsy and BoxyCharm and then going back for a repurchase. Honestly, a lot of those people just pretty much get their makeup from Ipsy or BoxyCharm or maybe TJ Maxx. Like a lot of those, a lot of your consumers that are in that bracket are not in the bracket of actually going back to buy your brand. So I think that the marketing might not necessarily be the best. Also, those people are so overfilled, <laughs> like they have so much makeup that they don't really need anymore or they don't really want anymore. And so I think they're, I don't know if they're necessarily knocking on the right doors. And because they try so much products from all of those subscription boxes, their standards are very, very high. Um, so you really gotta be on the top of your game to make people want to go and repurchase this. And I think Bodyography and a lot of the brands that are in Ipsy and BoxyCharm are not necessarily um, going to ever be repurchased. This is another brand that I really think could really struggle in 2022. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it's not struggling already. This is the brand Pretty Vulgar. This is their eyeshadow primer. Honestly, it's just okay. It's super overpriced. Um, I honestly don't really hugely like it because if you put even the smallest amount, like you have to put like the tiniest, tiniest amount because if you just put a small amount, not just a tiniest, tiniest amount, then it... it is so tacky that like your brush doesn't glide very well it kind of like sticks to your eyeshadow primer too much it it's really not my favorite i would honestly say that just using concealer works better than this does i think pretty vulgar will really struggle during 2022 because it has pretty packaging but honestly this is the only product that i've ever tried from them but from what other people have said their products can be very controversial, very hit or miss. And I think that in the makeup world, you can't have hit or miss products. You're going to go out of business. But especially if you're in a higher bracket, like drugstore products have really been stepping up their game. Indie products that are in the drugstore price range have really been stepping up their game. And so you need to step up your game. And I feel like they haven't necessarily. And yes, they have pretty packaging. But like we've said with Too Faced, Everybody has pretty packaging right now. You can't just rely on that. And I think that they haven't really come out with any new marketing tool other than they have pretty packaging. I also never hear anybody talk about their products. I think that they were in Ipsy or BoxyCharm at one point. Yeah, I, I think they're really gonna struggle.
I think they probably are struggling already. Okay, so this is a really, I don't know, is it super popular? I feel like it's a big name brand that a lot of people know, but honestly, I think it's gonna struggle. This is like one of my top brands I think are gonna struggle. This is the Laura Geller High Def Glow Illuminating Duo in Heart of Gold. Honestly, this is a really crappy palette. It has literally, oh geez, I almost dropped. Um, it has literally no pigment. I would definitely would not recommend this. I don't think this brand is gonna last because I think it's, I got this in like Ipsy or BoxyCharm. Um, I, I just don't, no one ever talks about it. I have tried their mascara, which was also an Ipsy or Boxy Charm, and it was good, but it wasn't anything that you would come back and repurchase. And like I already stated, that's, I would say that's literally the only incentive for these makeup brands to go in Ipsy and Boxy Charm is hoping that people go back and repurchase. I think that some of these brands are like, oh, we have all these like extra products, you know, like, oh, you know, like, we're finally selling off some to Ipsy or BoxyCharm, like it's at least finally leaving our doors. However, it can hurt you <laughs> in that it puts you under a lot more scrutiny because the people that have Ipsy and BoxyCharm have a lot of makeup because they have subscription boxes. They have a lot of makeup. And if you are not to those standards, like, I feel like it really hurts you. Um, it's also, you know, in that price range where I feel like people second guess. You know, like, do I really need this product? You know, like with e.l.f., this is really good. And it's also, I think, like $3. 3 or $6. So if a consumer sees this and they like it, it goes in their in their cart. Whereas if someone sees this and they like it, it's like... Do I have a lot of highlighters already? Yeah, I do. Do I really need this? I don't know. Do I really want to pay for shipping? Not really. And I, I think that really hurts this brand is I think it's okay products. I, I liked their mascara. This is shit. So their brand so far has an okay rating. <laughs> um, it averages out. Um, but at that price point, girl, you gotta you gotta be doing something good and I think their packaging is pretty lackluster, pretty boring. Their products are hit or miss. And at that price point, you can't be hitting or missing. You gotta have, have pretty constant good products. Okay, this is the brand Makeup Forever. I've never heard anybody talk about this. I really like this primer. This is the uh, color correcting primer. I really like it. Um, but once again, no one ever talks about this. I I think maybe globally it might be bigger because it is made in France. Maybe it's bigger globally. But at least in the US, I have never heard anybody talk about this brand ever. I think the one, I've heard one YouTuber talk about it and they didn't like it. So I think in the US, it's definitely going to be a struggle. But I really do like this product. So honestly, I think that every indie brand is gonna struggle during 2022 because it's so competitive. This is the Just Her highlighter. It is gorgeous. I love this. If you cannot tell by how much I've used, um, I really, really like it. Like, can you even see that? It's so beautiful. Okay, maybe I didn't swatch it the best here. Let me put it here. Now can you see? Oh yeah, now you can see it. It is so stunning. I love it. Um, this is the Phase Zero Matte Liquid Lipstick. Honestly, I use this as a liquid blush and it's really pretty. You just do a dot and then pat it out with your hand. Sorry, I can't look at you and pat it out at the same time. A really nice color. Um, yeah, a lot of these indie brands I've really been liking, but I think that it is a really competitive market. And can they compete with brands that are bigger and have more money at their disposal? Now, like another indie brand that I really like, um, this was in Ipsy or BoxyCharm. This is Rowan. This is a, a tinted balm. 
I really, really like it. Let me just watch it right here. And it smells like peppermint. It's right here. Um, I think these indie brands are really going to be struggling because because of this supply chain issues that they've been having because people are using less makeup i think that affects the indie brands the most and i you know i'm worried definitely i think that a lot of them really won't make it out of 2022 i think that they made it if they made it through 2022 you know they were probably <laughs> pension pennies and I think that there was you know this point where everyone was like you know we got to buy indie we have to support these indie brands however that momentum has largely died down like I think people are still interested in indie brands however I think that youtubers you know they're not making those indie brand videos anymore uh there's not that that hype around indie brands as much and I think that it really could affect them especially because a lot of those supply chain issues are still going on. A lot of people are still wearing masks and don't want to buy lip products. A lot of people are still having money money issues and don't want to buy makeup. Like I think that a lot of the struggles that indie brands have faced through 2021 still exist while at the same time they don't have the same positives that they had during 2021 with that uh, consumer's intent to support them. They don't have that anymore. Or not as much can you still survive I'm I'm really intrigued I'm interested I'm interested so that is the end of my brands I think could really struggle during 2021